is that just immediately where he is? Or okay, so let's talk about let's, let's, I'll answer that with this, this definition. An avoidable hinder is interference affecting the play that can be avoided with reasonable effort. So if we understand what those definitions are, now we can apply them. If I'm going to hit a ball and I'm going to swing and you're not moving out of the way, it's interference affecting the play, right? Could have been avoided with reasonable effort. Mm -hmm. If it can, then it's an avoidable. If it's for circumstance, happenstance, that you know you're moving out of the way, you know intent has not intent has everything to do with avoidable hinder, but uh, an intentional hinder. I mean, I, 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 I experienced this more, it seems, in doubles, where, like, for instance, the right side guys, there's a couple guys at Long Beach, and everybody bitches about them, that they just park, and just sit there, and they don't really move aside to give you an opportunity. And, you know, you don't want to be calling a hinder every, sh after every shot. Hit him. <laughs> but, now, but now with your arms, that'll ruin your arm. Yeah, yeah I know. So, anything that you could have avoided, you should have avoided. So if those guys are parking, not looking behind, because you really have to give the guy the shot, that's your, your obligation as a defensive player. You've got to give him the shot. Um, avoidable means if, it, if it's in doubles in the front right court and the ball goes back and forth so fast, and it couldn't have been avoided, that's just a hinder. Well, but, on that shot you're talking about, I played with the S play in, and I was on the right hand side, um, playing doubles, and, and he came off a couple of feet up and off the wall, and I just, and the guy was like, right for him. And then, so, okay, all right, whatever. Same thing, same thing, sir, the guy stood right from the head spin. Like, yep. I mean, what, what, what is his? Uh, his obligation is to not be there. The rules state. Be the straight line, though, is it? Yes, parallel to the sidewalk. So it's not a straight line angle, it's parallel to the sidewalk. Right. Okay, so it's so if you're in my line of sight and I hit you, it's an avoidable hinder. Avoidable. Avoidable hinder. So what do you, you do with calling with that? Just keep calling hinder, 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 hinder. If you got a guy in practice. Yeah. practice. yeah. Unfortunately, in practice. What we do in practice is we call the avoidable, we don't assess the penalty. You probably need a few of the five Hey, come on, you guys. That, that was avoidable. You got to move. You got to move out of my line, my direct line. Now, the question always comes up what about that revolving door? The back corner, let's say that's the front, this is the back. That revolving shot where the guy comes like this and shoots that corner, and that guy on the right side sits there and blocks it. Perfectly legal. Mm. It's perfectly legal because that's not the straight shot. The straight shot is parallel to the sidewall. Okay? We made that clarification last year in the rule book because it said straight shot, but it didn't define what a straight shot was. It's parallel to the side. Of it. So there's an obligation for that player to move out of the way. If he doesn't move out of the way, then it's an avoidable hinder, which you get a point or a side up. So that's that's the penalty that's the penalty that he assesses himself when he doesn't move out of the way. That doesn't mean that as part of good anticipation, I can't talk John to hitting a certain shot by being off to the side mm -hmm. or taking away the right corner or whatever, as long as I'm there before he starts his stroke, I can talk him into certain shots by positioning myself on the court. That's perfectly legal. But you can't move into the ball, you know, there's seven avoidables, you know, listed in the rule book. There's you know, things you can't do, but there are things you can do. Um, and basically, you know, not even, it's on tape and I watch it. <laughs> there are players who can hit the ball back at themselves, they roll it out, it's a point. If it comes up a little bit, it's a hinder. But if it comes up and they had time to get out of the way, and they did it, that's an avoidable. So you, you, there's, those are the three options that can happen. But two of them are good, even when you miss your shot. That's gone. So we're just uh, starting out, we're going over the stuff that uh, Anybody has that they wanted to maybe address tonight? Did anything? You're good? Do you have, any, you have anything you want to learn tonight in particular? Just drills. Cool. That'll go with the back wall. For those that don't know, Richard is Richard Ramirez from LA Fire Department. Are we on for Monday, by the way? No. This one? No. Okay. John and I will come back in time.
Okay. So let's get started. We're waiting for you, Rich. <laughs> so, okay, 7.30. Yeah, Paul. Ah, forget that. So let's get started because we've got a lot to cover. And I, I'm here. I don't care how long I stay, but you know, I want to infringe on your time. So um, let's talk about what this, this, this clinic's called Percentage Handball. And what, is, what does percentage mean? Variable odds, right? Your odds will change in a handball match. And what we're going to teach you today for tonight is how to put those odds in your favor to put yourself in a winning position. Because your odds will change. You'll learn how to create and understand these favorable odds. So we practice what we learned tonight, okay? And it's going to be difficult in a tournament situation, but we're going to practice what we learned tonight. We apply it. You went too fast. Now you stole, stole my thunder. You stole my thunder. So we apply it in practice in game situations. We create our favorable odds and we become that winner. That's all. So here's the agenda for tonight. We talk about fundamentals. We talk about serve. Returns. Oh, back up. Man, a lot. Come on, man. They're fired. Back place. There we go. Uh, offense and defense, we're going to talk about the opponent. Yeah, the, the piece of advice that Nadia Alvarado gave me, which we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about good court positioning. We're going to talk about creating favorable odds. And then my favorite, which you got to stick around for, is mental toughness. Okay, we're going to talk a little about strategy and, and mental. Okay, so what con contributes to winning? What's the elements and the, the anatomy of a win? Who here has local wins? Raise your hand. Burn, you too. Who's got, who's got local wins? Who, who's won at local tournaments? Raise your hand. Okay, mm -hmm. keep it up, keep it up. That's it? There's two, there's two winners, three winners? Gary, you ever won a local tournament? C division. Okay, it doesn't matter. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Hey, 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 hey. Back up. Who got, who got a state wins? Huh? Anybody a state champion? Raise your hand if you're a state champion. You raise your hand, Vern? Okay, go. Anybody has a regional win? Western region? Northwest? Raise your hand. No? There's only two of us raising our hands still? Next? <laughs> national win. Who's a national winner? Raise your hand. You're a national winner, right on. No state winner, but national winner. All right. Who was that? Okay? Who has a world win? Vern, how many do you have? Not sure. I have four. Four world championships. Singles and doubles. Next. Who's playing on the pro tour? Raise your hand. Vern, your hands still raised? Okay, great. This is sort of a fun exercise, guys, because... Uh, back up. It's a fun exercise because I'd like to see, number one, who your audience is for us. Number two, um, we know what it takes to win. We've been there and done that. We've been in those difficult situations. We've created hinders on purpose. When we manipulated the rules to, to, to get ourselves in a favorable position, because we know the rules, okay? Um, we've hit those kill shots. We've hit those ace shots. We've, hit those, we've come, made those comebacks. We've done everything there is to do to win. And we want to share some of that with you, okay? So, one more last thing. Vern, you were ranked third in the world as a professional? Two, I had a number one ranked for number one a few months. A few months. Second for a long time. Second for a long time. That's right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. I was thinking about myself. Uh, <laughs> so, number two in the world, right? The only guy ahead of him was Nadia Arado, right? That's the god of handball. Little guy, G, small G. Uh, myself, I've been. Uh, Highest ranked is number three, but my ranking was really four. But I got it to number three. Uh, and also four world titles. So we know how to win. We want to share that with you. Please, even outside of this room, you see us around, you want us to come watch you play, you have a question about somebody playing, pull us aside. We'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. 
Okay, so let's talk about fundamentals real quick. How many have been taught fundamentals how to hit a handball? Three. Okay. But yet we still play. So if we learn the proper fundamentals, I, I equate it to baseball. Um, I talk about, let's just say Sean Kent gets a base hit and he's on first base and the coach is chattering in his ear. The coach may say, hey, what's for dinner tonight? Where are we going? Where, what bar are we hitting up? But I guarantee you he's telling him, hey, there's one out, go hard on the ground ball, break up two, freeze on the line drive. He's constantly getting those fundamentals pumped into his, or piped into his head, okay? Unfortunately, we don't have a coach unless you go to a university that has handball for a coach standing over us telling us how to do fundamentals. So we want to share a few fundamentals with you. Uh, you know, I get a lot of questions. They say, John, how do you hit the ball so hard? John, how do you hop the ball so, so well? I get these kinds of questions, and a lot of it has to do with fundamentals, okay? So we're going to talk just a little bit about fundamentals. Uh, where you talk about uh, how, where you contact the ball. Do we have a handball in the room? Do we have a handball clip without a handball? Yes. Yes. You know why? Because we, 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 have, we have lots of handball clinics. You know what I've learned? What? Is that guys know what they're talking about in here. In the classroom, everybody says, yes, 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 yes. They understand, they understand. You put gloves on, the IQ goes down like 50%. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, this guy's got a home operation. All right, thank you. Okay, so that works. Keep it alive. Keep here, here's some basic fundamentals. Contacting the ball. How to hit an open-handed shot. How to hit a fish shot. Uh, just a simple stroke. You know, you're talking about different strokes, short stroke, whatever. Um, there's an overhand, there's a sidearm, there's a low sidearm, there's an underhand fist. Uh, I can tell you two, two shots on that stroke. Uh, v pass took me from uh, an open player or A player to an open player, and then eventually open player to a pro is a V pass, where you stand just behind the short line on one wall, left or right, and you hit that front center court, hits the side wall, and just drops behind the short line. That one shot I learned took me from that level to the next level, just one shot. The other shot that helped me out was the underhand fist. If you don't have an underhand fist shot, you need it with both hands. Okay, that gets you out of a lot of trouble. And I forgot if this slide's going to go into each one of these. Um, anytime we want to hit the handball, we always want to face the side wall whenever possible. Let's say, uh, that's, let's say that's the front wall. Side wall, we want to be parallel to the side wall. And so oftentimes we see guys try to hit the ball like this, open. We always want to turn sideways and hit, hit our center line. I think we're going to talk a little bit more about these later here in this presentation. Uh, center line of your body. So all these are basic fundamentals. How many have been taught this? I don't. When I first started, I wasn't. I didn't, didn't know any of this. So, and if you want, I'll, I can give you a copy of this presentation. Okay, so you don't have to write anything down. Mm -hmm. Want to talk about it? So, uh, the takeaway from this slide is fundamentals are for everybody. Now we're going to talk more about these in depth. So. When the first thing I talk about in fundamentals is watching the ball. And if you have the ball with a label on it, you can see the label. If you see dirt on it, you can see it spinning. Just anything you want, something about the ball that helps. I came from the inner game of tennis. Just watch something about the ball and it makes it look good. That was both written in the 60s. And so if you watch something about the ball. In terms of handball, what I teach people is you watch it with your nose. And so if you watch, Paul Hamer did in that book. His eyes looked like they were coming out of his head when he was watching the ball. And he, during a timeout, he wouldn't take his nose off the ball. He just never, ever took his nose off the ball. For us, I'm just asking you, when the ball goes around the court, follow it with your nose, and your eyes will stay on it. It's the simplest thing in the world. Just never let the back of your head go to it, because that's how you lose the rhythm of the rally. It's if the back of your head goes to it, where is it, where is it? And then all of a sudden you gotta find it and pick it up again. Never ever turn the back of your head to the ball. Our coach in college, Mike Dow, who's a Marine. So we had to drop the ball on our serve, we just hit the serve, and the ball went somewhere we weren't expecting, and he said, which way was it spinning? Somehow from up in the gallery, he thought he could tell if we were lying or not, but we knew, we knew we were watching it. We had to drop and give him 20. I'm not watching the ball. Because that's the easiest time. And everything that you do, that, we, that I tell you in here, I hope that you can take something with you that you can train yourself. The easiest way to start working on some of the things is on the surf. 
You drop the ball on serve. Your head should be down when you hit it. A golfer. Head is down. This is the only thing in the court that's moving. That front wall hasn't moved in like 50 years. The back wall hasn't moved. This is moving. This is what you're watching. So when you go to hit the ball, your head is down. They say in golf, any, any sport, if your head is on the ball, you actually get more torque. I'm not so sure about that, but that's, that's the rule. Keep your head on it. Watch it. As your head goes through it, they say Ted Williams can watch the ball hit the back. Because he had 20, 15, Gary, you probably know that vision. And he, he can plays, actually, he plays he good. He claims he can watch the ball hit <laughs> the back. <laughs> His head was here, and it, that's how he got to see the ball so well. So follow it with your nose into your hand. Can you turn the lining up a little? Yeah. Oh, right, maybe. Uh -oh. Can you turn that back on your There you go. Good. Okay. See, uh, I don't know if anybody knows. It would be very bad if you play it. Have you guys ever followed with your nose? I just want to check real quick. How many times have you hit a ball and you barely, you barely hit it? You miss it. It comes off your hand sideways. You call that. That's taking your eyes. I say eyes off the ball. You know, we gotta use both eyes. If you have two good eyes, you gotta use both eyes, not just your eyes. So keep your eyes on the ball. Um, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm an aging athlete. I'm gonna be 51 this year. Don't laugh, okay? Just uh, a puppy. Yeah, just a kid. Uh, I notice my eyesight's not as good. You know, I'm starting to wear more reading glasses and have distance and all this. And it's starting to affect me on the court. It's really starting to mess with my mojo and my brain. It's like, man, I'm just starting to lose that edge. And one thing I have to tell myself when I told myself about fundamentals, one of the fundamentals I tell myself is keep my eyes on the ball. Because I've done it so many times. There's not a shot I haven't hit. There's not a shot I haven't seen hit, just like Vern. And that when I go to hit that ball and I just miss it barely and it just ticks off my hand or I don't hit it on the sweet spot, typically you want to hit it where you're going to throw it. So when you grab this ball, you're going to go throw it. Where would you, where would you throw it? Where would you grab it? That's exactly where you want to hit the ball, right there. Okay, we're going to talk about the hop in a minute. Uh, but that's where you want to hit the ball. So we've got to keep our eyes on the ball. You know, we have so much muscle memory that a lot of times we do, it's called unconscious competence. We don't even think about what we're doing. It's unconscious. But we have competence because we do it and we do it very well. So what we want to try to do is bring that unconscious competence into conscious competence. So one of the ways to do that is by keeping your eyes on the ball. Uh, because I'm missing these balls just barely, I'm not hitting my shot. I'm really having now, because of my age, I'm really having to tell myself, John, watch that ball. It's, it's so easy. It's so easy to say, but to actually do it, your game's going to increase. You're going to miss, you're going to miss, miss hitting it, <laughs> really. So, John pointed out that where you want to hit it is where you throw it and let go of it. Whenever there's a doubt about any stroke that you hit the handball court, a serve, a ceiling shot, a left-handed shot. Any any doubt that you ever have is if you can go in and throw it, you can hit it. If you want to throw a B pass, if you want to hit a B pass, you got to be able to throw it first. That's what Coach Dow would say. If you want to be able to hit a shot, you've got to be able to throw it first. And when you throw a ceiling shot, you lean back, get your butt down, and you throw the ball up to the ceiling, and then, then it goes. And when you hit a serve, get down, you throw it like a second base in the first, and you follow through the target, and that's where it goes. So if there's ever a doubt on any shot that you want to hit, go and throw it. And actually, when I, when, I, when I teach the serve, when I teach people to hit a drive serve, I have them throw it first. I say, throw, throw, your, throw the drive serve. Throw your ace serve. And then we see if it looks like that when they hit it. You know, all of a sudden, it's in close. Because if you're going to hit a drive serve, if you're going to throw an ace, you'd be out here like so. If you want to hit an ace, if you want to hit a serve, all of a sudden these guys tend to be in closer because they want to keep the ball close to themselves. So throw it and hit it. Throw it and hit it. I have a question. Uh, isn't that supposed to be the ball right in the center of the ball? No. A little bit higher. So, so I would tell you, catch it. How would you throw it? Just like that. Just like you got it. How would you throw it? To, how would you throw it back to That's the a good one. I learned something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to hit it. Now, am I going to throw the ball back to you like this? No. 